This is such an exciting facility. Can you tell me a little bit about Autodesk's investment in this facility, please? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, when we started off, we always had a machine shop here in the, the Birmingham office. It was part of the original Dal Dalcom acquisition. Um, and what we found very quickly was it resonated so well with the Autodesk message about the, the convergence of design and make that it was absolutely the right thing to invest in it. So over the last 18 months, we've had an enormous investment here, both in refurbishing, smartening up the facilities, of course, adding an enormous amount of new kit, um, which is, is very apparent as you walk around. But most importantly, also opening the whole facility up. So in the past, you could visit this office and not know we had a manufacturing facility here at all unless we brought you and deliberately took you in there. Um, now by having the sort of open access so you can see some of the equipment, you see through to everything else, the whole thing just becomes a much more an integral part of the, the activity and the experience of being here. And can we mention, Steve, the global network of Autodesk and how far this is reaching? Yeah, well, obviously Autodesk itself is a global company, but what we've established um, to, to reinforce our design to make message is that we, we have a network of, of advanced technology centers around the world. So there are actually five in total. The AMF here is one of them. Uh, we have the build space in Boston, which is focused very much on construction. We have Pier 9, uh, which is the, the quite famous facility in, in San Francisco. It's very unusual on a pier and, and really was the first step of Autodesk showing that it was serious about making things. Uh, we have a new facility in Toronto, in Canada, and we also have a facility down in Australia, uh, in Kilsyth, which is being used for testing plastics for, to support uh, simulation of molding processes. And how will this facility uh, benefit your customers? Well, there's a number of ways. I mean, the first one um, is the direct one. We sell our services to customers so that we are doing subcontract machining and we're doing paid consultancy assignments, which are based here in the AMF. Um, the second one is really a very direct one as well. We use it as a test bed for our software, both to help us improve the quality and reliability of the software and the usability, but also to figure out what are the challenges looking ahead. Um, and the third way is really just that it makes sure that we are right up there you know, in our thinking, understanding what the problems are that customers are wrestling with, where the difficulties really lie. And sometimes that's not, not very glamorous. You know, it's easy to focus on the hard, challenging com computer problems. That's what we do. But sometimes the, the real problems that customers happen are much more mundane. It's about the sequence of operations or making sure you know where to find data or making sure that people do things in the right, you know, the right sequence in the right way or tracking what's happened, for example. So making sure that your expectations of the environment are matched by reality. And all of those things can really only be done by living and breathing and working with it in, in a practical environment like this. No, I mean, it's absolutely, it's so exciting to see this, Steve. And um, it's great. Um, endorsement for engineering and manufacturing and, and the innovation behind it. You're synchronizing all of this new technology and how does that work and why should the younger generation look to get into this industry? I mean, looking behind you here, um, it's not a grubby uh, sh workshop anymore, is it, Steve? Uh, absolutely not. I mean, okay, it's a bit theme parky just behind me here, but, uh, but I think the point we're trying to make with this is that, that, that manufacturing technology engineering has moved on a long way. I think there's a, a lot of people, if you mention a factory, they, they picture possibly some of those wartime factories that had rows of people assembling tanks or something in a, in a very grubby environment or, or the guy that crawls in oily over, overalls underneath your car. And absolutely, it's not that. Engineering is a challenging problem solving activity and nowadays it's happening in very high-tech environments which you see here with our robot display cell which is very much to be on display but just walk through into the rest of the facility you can see there as well there are not pools of oil or piles of swarf and there's nobody in dirty overalls so I think what we're trying to do is help to communicate via this kind of facility that probably the the default the stereotypical image of engineering is just wrong um, and I, I can relay an interesting experience, actually, that, that we, had, um, we had a bunch of interns here last year come from university to, to experiment. So, okay, they're, um, they're doing engineering or, or, or scientific-related degrees, but they came to experience the engineering, engineering environment. And every one of them, to my surprise, expressed surprise that people were so friendly and helpful and that the environment was so interesting and engaging. And that says something that these people already in these scientific disciplines have got some kind of preconception in their heads about how it's going to be. And thankfully, they found they were wrong. And so I think the more we can build on that, um, the more chance we have of, of 
dealing with the challenge we have on skills by filling the pipeline with more people of all types um, wanting to come in and be part of this exciting profession. I totally agree and I love your logo in regards to unlocking creativity and what an amazing industry it is to get into. Absolutely. Thank you Steve. No, it's a pleasure, thank you.